And this is an, a good uh, reminder right up front here. Honor My Wishes is coming up November 17th. So um, somebody from Creator Cares will be in the narthex if you want to sign up for that because it wa- is one that we do want people to sign up for so you're able to have the resources available. There will be lunch and um, other things available. Uh, lunch and then the presentation will follow. So that's good timing. You can see that. And it, we already have a good amount of sign up. And you're welcome to bring also people from outside of Creator who you know are going through the, some of the same decision making. Um, if you're like need that sandwich generation thinking about your parents, or if you're in my parents' um, generation, you're thinking about yourself. So both of them are good options to come and learn about that. Today we will be having an adult education. Um, we'll continue our kind of conversation of our Lutheran toolkit of how to talk to our neighbor these days and, um, and also kind of prepare for um, the reality of, of our division that's happening because of the political climate that we have. So I'll be focusing on the work of Dietrich Bonhoeffer today. Um, so come if you, and then that also, <laughs> when it's available, we try to put it on YouTube. Last week's um, recording did not work, so it was not put up later. Some other announcements of our life together. We, ha- we do have um, the funeral for Doug Finch this coming Sunday, which is Reformation Sunday at 2 o'clock. Um, in lieu of cookies, if you want to bring your favorite dessert to share or are able to provide that, that would be very helpful for the family and for congregation. We also had another um, death this last week. Bob Rutowski died this last week as well. So we're working with Dagmar to talk about when his service will be as well. He had Lewy body disease for about 15 years. So um, many of you maybe haven't seen him in a while. But um, so we keep Mike and Jim and the rest of the family in our prayers at this time as well. And then we have a lot of upcoming events. I kind of wanted to highlight... Um, the well, next week is Reformation. The following week is All Saints. So, if you have somebody you want us to honor, please let the office know so we do don't we don't forget any names to read during the services that day. And then November second, we have our Fall Festival. This used to be on fa- um, Halloween, and now we've moved it to the s- the Saturday after. So, bring all the little people in your life. Encourage little people to come. There's some flyers you can take and hand out to people in the community. Our confirmation kids do a really good job of, um, and high school kids do a good job of being hospitable that day. So I think the other announcement is a a nice uh, uh, continuation with our stewardship temple talk. So I'd like to invite Dave Exe forward.
towards the front as you are able. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You may follow around in your bulletins as you cannot see the screen from where you are. <coughs> Gracious God, we come we before, before you, you to, to confess, confess to you that we have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. We have walked in pride as we have relied on ourselves. We have sunk and gotten lost in despair as we have not trusted you and your promises. Help us bring forth the fruits of your spirit, the forgiveness, love, joy, and peace that you have shown to us. Forgive us from our unfaith in you and our wrongdoing, even those stubborn habits that we struggle with. All these things we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to God, die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may turn towards the front for our, op- our gathering hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated.
us pray. Dear Lord, we want to be glorified by you and the world, by what we do and achieve. We want to be recognized, and we have false humility when we serve others. We ask that you continue to reveal your glory in us by your forgiveness and mercy. Preserve us in your grace and make us persevere with strong faith in the confession of your name for the benefit of our neighbor. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord.
forward for our children's sermon. Welcome, everybody. It's good to see all of you up here. Can you go my way that we came back? There you go. So I have a question for you. Are you all growing? Are you growing? Yes. How can you tell that you're growing? Do you get taller and taller every day? That's amazing. I, you're probably in that stage right now, right? <laughs> Sometimes we notice all of a sudden our pants are super short on us or our shoes don't fit. Has that ever <laughs> happened to some of you? Yes, it happens to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your favorite Cinderella shoes don't fit you, so you might have to give them to your cousin. Yep, that happens. You grow out of them sometimes, yep. Yeah. Ooh, yep, it's good to have other shoes sometimes that we, as you grow up, right? There's other ways we grow, too. So sometimes when we're little, we, we need a lot of help, don't we? We, at first, I bet you at one point, and Milo probably still needs help getting dressed from mom and dad and other things. And But some of us are big enough that we don't need help getting dressed. And then sometimes as we get older, guess what? We have to get help getting dressed again. <laughs> That's part of the, uh, the reality of our life, that we're always going to have some needs that we need other people in our life to help us with. And there'll be times in your life you're like, I don't need any help at all. Has that ever happened yet? That you want to dress yourself or you want to do things your own way? Yeah? Mm, sometimes we, we want to have that independence. So even though our parents say, nope, you're not ready, sometimes we want it anyway. Well, today we're going to hear uh, in the gospel a story about James and John who kind of want to have everything for themselves. And they are kind of me-focused. Have you ever been me-focused? Like, me, me, me. I want what I want, and, I, um, and you need to give it to me. We treat our parents like that sometimes. Sometimes we treat our friends like that. And sometimes we treat God like that, too. That God just needs to give us whatever we want right now already. Yeah, sometimes our friends do that, too, and we can no sometimes notice it in other people better, better than we can notice it in ourselves. Well, we also, so we're always going to have some needs, and we're always sometimes going to, when we have those needs, go, I don't feel good, I need something for myself, and we, we pray for that, and we'll talk about that a little bit in the other sermon. But there's also other times as we grow up that we can help other people. Have any of you ever helped somebody? Yeah. Do you help around the house sometimes? Yeah? Do you help any sometimes friends when they need help? Or maybe you're with your little sister, do you help sometimes? Yep. So those are ways that we're learning to serve each other too. So sometimes we have needs and we need to be served. And sometimes we, when, as we get bigger especially, we can serve others. And that is a way that God uses us to help people. And it's called to be a servant of other people. And that's a part of our life, too, as Christians, not just to receive, but also to give, to care for other people. And, to, and sometimes that's not easy. Sometimes it means I don't get to watch my favorite show because I need to help in something. Or I need to, I'm going to be a little bored maybe for a little while, or have to work hard, or maybe even get sweaty. But somebody else has something they need, and I can help them with it. And there's a beautiful thing when we realize that we have something important that we can share. We can share our time. We can share our, our presence with people and just listen to people. And we can also share our hard work. And the last thing we can share is the best of all. We can share God, that Jesus Christ and share peop with people who we know God to be. But all those things are reminders that we're growing up in our faith too. Just as you're growing up and learning to do things by yourself, God's also encouraging you to help other people as you grow in your faith, too. So a lot of growing happening, not just out of our shoes. Sometimes we're also growing out of our roles and what we do in our lives. And that can be the scariest times. 
Yeah, that does happen. So while you're growing out of your clothes, remember you're also growing in other ways too. Okay, let us pray together. Dear Jesus Christ, thank you for helping us to grow, for providing our, our new shoes and our family and our friends that help us in those moments when we're growing so fast we don't even know what to do. But also help us to grow in service to other people, to remember that it's not all about ourselves, it's also about the people around us who you love just as much as you love us. Thank you for reminding us and help us to be your, your children in the world, reminding the world of just how amazing you are. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may return to your seats. Congregation, please rise. The Holy Gospel from St. Mark, the 10th chapter. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the drink? The cup, uh, to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that, of which I am baptized. And they said to them, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those who are prepared, for whom it has been prepared. And then the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentile lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, James and John, the sons of thunder, they have a lot of loud noises and not a lot of substance sometimes. But we, we are quick in this text today to point out probably their selfishness in this, op- this question they bring towards Jesus. It's a very opportunistic request. Right when they're about to get into Jerusalem, they want to make sure that their future is secured. So we get a little bit judgy towards James and John as we listen to this text about who is going to be great and where are we going to sit. Yet consider the majority of your requests. God. Help me get an A on my test, God. Change that person, God, so that I don't have to deal with them anymore. Make that person love me, Lord. Help me get this job, Lord. Lord, I hope everything goes well for me. Lord, I hope that my car doesn't break down. Lord, I pray for my health. I pray for my home. I pray for my family. Often, even when we pray for the world, it is to reduce our own worries. Lord, please help the things that are happening in Israel and Palestine because it's making me really anxious. Lord, please get peace in the world because I'm afraid that it will come into my community and my home. A lot of times we phrase our prayers and our conversations with God orienting in ourself. Have you, did you hear how many me, myself, and I were in those prayers? The me, me, me of faith has its place because we all have some very real things that are happening to us. And those prayers can be very faithful. 
because they're taking our concerns of the moment to God. Whether those concerns are, as a student, the, the stress and the reality of the, the tests and the friendships that are happening for them, the sporting events is one of the main things we pray for in confirmation. Like every week, it's like grandparents and sports are the two things that come up for our kids in confirmation. Those are very real bringing of our concerns to our Father in heaven. But the me, me, me of faith can also go from quickly from the good to the bad and the ugly super fast. Because often those show are the disposition of our heart and our mind is centered in ourselves, which can be very sinful. And God's will is second to my will because I know what I need and God hears my request, so please get, get on it and fulfill these requests for me so that I can be more comfortable, so that I can be at peace. We look to God to make the world and all of its habit inhabitants work for us. We are stuck in that sense in this childlike adolescent faith, not quite that I need my parents all the time, but that, yeah, I could do the dishes without being nagged, but really I'd rather my parents ask me five times. Really, I could be, take ownership of my homework and what I need to do, but I don't want to. I don't want to be responsible for the things in my life. It's hard work. I don't need to grow up very fast. And while we see that in adolescents and are frustrated by their lack of, well, they cling to us when we don't want them to, and then they try to push away from us when they need us the most, right? That's the seesaw that uh, my children, of course, are wonderful and never do this, but... The rest, I was my, myself with my mom. I'll focus on myself. One really very much of like, I wanted the independence where I didn't need it. And I didn't want it where I really needed to grow into it. We are like that in our faith a lot too. We ask for God for the very things that really a little bit of hard work on our own can resolve the conflict of ourselves. Or instead of saying, Let God help everybody around me, we actually have in ourselves often the gifts that God has given us to be poured out for the sake of our neighbor. So instead of God resolving everything on our behalf and for everybody, maybe, just maybe, God has provided in you exactly what is needed. And you are being that teenager of the faith and just pounding your foot, I don't want to. Because your question often becomes in your selfishness, how useful is God to me? I want to make sure that I'm getting something worthwhile out of this transaction and this relationship with God. Otherwise, well, what is it really for me? James and John phrase their question this way. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Now, usually, if you're like me, you're quick to answer no. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding yourself? Let instead, and, and that reality is we just shut down all self-reflection when we just quickly say no. But Jesus has a way of not shutting down the self-reflection, but seeks to draw James and John out in where they are focused and having us realize, what do we want from God? What do we need from God? And what are we already getting from God? Are we busy pouting at what we don't get that we are not, have not realized all that we have gotten from the Lord? So Jesus doesn't say no right away. He says, what do you want? And they, I can't imagine, they start, you know, the whole three genie wishes. What would you wish for if you were them at this point? If you could ask for anything you want from God, I bet your list is similar to that first list I made. Or if you're Harry Potter fans, the Goblet of Fire, you're like, oh, I could have eternal glory with just the right ingredients. Usually eternal glory or something about ourselves is involved in what we want from the Lord. James, for James and John, it was pretty simple. We want one of us to sit at your right hand and one of, you to sit, one of us to sit at your left hand. We want to have the positions of power in your future government. 
We want to have important seats at the table. We want to be set up for the worldly and the political powers out there. And then they added that little caveat, in your glory, of course, not in ours. And it's all about you, God, but really it's about getting the credit and the benefit from you by being close to the positions of power. They're glory chasing. And even when they, if they were to serve, it would be to fill up that resume with good things that they are doing. And the further question is, where have they even been for the last three years? What have they been listening to? Because Jesus may, has made it pretty clear that he is not going to Jerusalem to set up a new political party and take over Jerusalem to set the, the government straight. He is going there to suffer and die. So they're completely not understanding what Jesus has said. So Jesus asked them, well, are you able to drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they answer super quickly, yeah, of course we are. Now compare this to when you get all those forms, like when you want a contract signed, and they say at the doctor's office, here's what you're signing, and you're like, yeah, whatever. And you just sign the, on the dotted line, or when you want a new... Um, Xfinity contract or some, you know, you want to have your kids in sports and there's all these things you have to sign. Do you know about the concussion relief? Do you know about the bodily harm possibilities? And you just start clicking down. You don't even read it because you want to get the results. You want to get the goods. So all the things you're signing away, yeah, we're able to do all this. It will all sort itself out later. We just want the answer if we can be at the position of power, if we can get into the sport, if we can have the new TV channel and watch the Major League Baseball Super, um, World Series coming up. All these things. We want the thing that will help us. And we don't care about what comes with it. You see, we, like James and John, are often the ones who, at any cost, want to move forward. And we see it in other places in our life where we hear the Mussolini, the power corrupts, and the absolute power corrupts absolutely. I guess Machiavelli, sorry. Or all of us, will, if our hands get a little dirty, who really cares? As long as we have a place to be stable. We become all the king's men, don't we? We have a lot of phrases out there for how at any cost we want comfort and we want our will to be done. They are seeing the goal, their goal, as power and glory, ease and comfort, and that can be very self-serving and very self-centered. So Jesus talks about the, re the reality of leaders in our world, saying that rulers that lord over people are rampant in our world. The great ones among us who have those positions of power often exercise their authority over the not-so-great ones. We live in a world, just like the disciples, where advantage is sought. I want to be on top of the pig pile. I want to be king of the mountain. Even in our schoolyards, we play these games of who is the best. I remember the king of the mountain lasted about until fifth grade when some ki kids ended up bleeding. From early on, this is how we live, because the champion gets all the spoils and the glory, and the leftovers don't seem like they'll be enough. But Christ's cup is not one of glory that the world knows, is it? James and John are completely wrong in their request, completely wrong in their understanding of what it means to be a disciple. Christ's cup is one of suffering, not worldly glory. It's a baptism is one of blood, of death. These are references of the Old Testament prophets where an empty cup is actually a cup of suffering. And the baptism of death is one of martyrdom. And the disciples would actually suffer. This cup actually was not going to be passed from them. Every single one of the disciples ends up martyred because the people sin against them just as they sinned against Jesus because they want their will done just as much as we want our will done. 
but the rest of the disciples follow in the line of James and John just like we do. And they're indignant that James and John asked first that they jumped the gun. The factions and the power plays began to fracture the disciples. Even though you are playing king on the mountain now, exercising authority over others, it will not be so among you, Jesus says. Even though right now you're jockeying for position, you're hoping that the right people get into the right places, that kind of authority as lording over others is not your future either. Whoever's is great, Jesus says, must be servant. Whoever is first must be slave of all. God's glory isn't one of credit and position. It is also isn't some inverse where you're glorified because you serve and suffer. We are all perfectly free lords of all, not to lord it over one another, but to be free from all the power plays and the worries of this world, knowing that Christ has freed us fully in our life through his death and resurrection. We are also perfectly free servants of all. We are a both and, not an either or people. Not to glorify our human service or get a bigger reward. Not making ourselves idols, but to freely respond to our neighbor in their need. To recognize that beyond the me, me, me of our relationships with God is also a call to serve our neighbor who's right there within your reach. It's very hard to not make even that about ourselves, though, because we can quickly go, I don't have the time. I don't have the motivation. I'm exhausted. What will people think of me? And in our sin, we are bound to completely look and turn in on ourselves. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer actually did talk about how while Christian discipleship certainly results in personal fulfillment and deeper life meaning, such fulfillment and meaning are always a result, not a goal, of loving one's neighbor and serving others. So when you are on that hamster loop of me, 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 and even when your service is about me, 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 we spend a lot of time in that land. And outside of confession, we usually are pretty selfish in our requests to God. And sometimes, please hear me that that's okay. Because I know that those requests are the ones that allow you to be freed to serve your brothers and sisters and your neighbors and your friends. But I also know that even our confession at times can be motivated simply to avoid or to gain. I want to avoid the consequences of my sin. Lord, please forgive me so that I can get out of this. We, it would would seem, are trapped and need to be freed. The good news today for us and for James and John is that while our requests indicate our self-focus, our willfulness, our self-seeking ways, that Jesus Christ, God's only Son, came not to serve, to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Ransom, you say? Well, if Christ has come to ransom, that means we're captive. That means we've been kidnapped, held from our freedoms by someone and something. Well, if you are thinking that, you're right. You are captive to your needs. You are captive to your desires. You are captive to the reality and the screaming cries of your body and your soul and all the things that you're listening to on the news are holding you captive and in fear. And having sinned against Christ and not trusting that he is Lord of it all, over all heaven and on earth, over all leaders, you are set free by him. Christ has paid the ransom to the jailers of sin, death, and the devil. He has paid it with his life, setting you free from your captivity that is so rampant in this world, free to trust that God will provide all you need even before you ask, free to live not to earn your position and prestige or honor, but already honored by the Lord of all, Jesus Christ who calls you daughter calls you son, calls you beloved, calls calls you forgiven, calls you my child. So you, Creator Lutheran Church, 
are free to be lords over all. You're free to be servants of everyone. And you're freed to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you are near to the brokenhearted, and you save the crushed in spirit. Deliver us from every fear and trouble that the praise of your name would continually be in our minds, hearts, and mouths. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Dear God, with us salvation is impossible, but with you all things are possible. Give boldness to your church in this church and throughout the world to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, by whose death and resurrection your kingdom has been given to us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, bless all who study at our universities and seminaries. Raise up more church workers, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, lead our households to find eternal rest in your Son and his word. Give fathers and mothers diligence in teaching their children and preserve us all from hardness of heart. Give us urgency to hear and share the good message of salvation today. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, guide our nation and its leaders in true wisdom to promote honest labor, temporal protection, and fitting enjoyment under the sun. 
died your Christians to serve Christ in their citizenship and callings. Do not let our hearts be occupied with the vanity of riches that perish, or a Savior that is not you, but with the true joy of Christ and in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. When we, your children, cry out to you, you hear us, merciful Lord. We ask that you deliver our brothers and sisters in Christ out of all their troubles. We especially lift up to you the family and friends of this congregation in silence and out loud. Hear our prayer. Draw near to save the brokenhearted, the crushed in spirit, the sick, and those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Incline your ears to our prayers, dear Lord, and answer them according to your most gracious and holy will. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Peace to you and thank you. <laughs> Peace to you and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Peace to you. Peace to you, my dear. Okay. Let me know what I can do. Yeah. Oh. Peace to you. Thank you for sharing with us. <clears throat> Peace, my friend. <laughs> Please rise if you are able, and let us pray. God of mercy, you know, two forward, please. Or I'll just do it. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, we give you thanks for creating us and all that exists. We give you thanks for giving us and still preserving our bodies and souls and all their abilities. Continue to provide for our every need such as food and clothing, home and family, daily work, and all we need from day to day. Use us in our vocations that we may help our neighbor in their every need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like the communion of Christians to come forward. We'll be communing at the altar today. If you need gluten-free communion, let me know. And if you, um, the darker liquid is wine and the lighter is grape juice. Um, if you need us to come to you, please let the ushers know, and we'll do that after we commune those who come forward. These are God's gifts for you, God's people. Come.
please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, again in the body and blood of your Son, you have looked on us with grace and mercy. We thank you and ask you that you make us glad in your promises for us and hold fast to you alone. Grant your Holy Spirit to enlighten us with his gifts so that we live out our days in the hope and peace that Christ is with us always. We ask this in the blessed name of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'll stay standing for a moment, I'm going to have Darren come up quick and give an announcement of, I forgot about, next Sunday. Receive the blessing of our Lord, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. with you. Thanks be to God.